Good afternoon, everyone. Today I wanted to talk about agricultural losses across our planet this year due to abnormally low temperatures and frost events. The entire series of my videos is based on the premise that we are going to have decreased solar activity, decreased sunspot numbers, and this will lead into a colder era which will mimic something in either the early 1800s or in the mid 1600s that will affect our agricultural production globally. So if the earth is going to a cooling period, we should start to see signs of cooling activity. Let's take a look in Australia, severe frost this year, already damaging crops, 10 days of frost, unexpected and well in advance of when any types of these cool temperatures should arrive. This is in Victoria and Mali. You can see easily the temperature differences here on the graph, and this in turn ushers in widespread severe frost. Australia is cutting its wheat export forecast to five-year lows because of these events that are happening. I notice on the next map here, Mali, obviously at the bottom on the right side there, in Victoria. There's other areas that are also expanding in cool, and these will rapidly cool over the next couple of years, just in the first few years we'll really start to see some effect so you would expect these areas to enlarge in size next year with a, maybe even a couple of degrees cooler temperature. Agricultural crops, wheat is one thing, soybeans are another, sorghum, but lupin, uh, they lost 90 percent of their crop there this year in certain areas. Droughts always seem to accompany these cool weather events and again in the northeast Australian areas they're experiencing drought Jump over to northern Africa, Algeria is taking a hit, untimely dryness. South Africa, their wheat crop has decreased a little bit due to cooler temperatures. And interestingly enough, South Africa sent an all-time countrywide cold record as well. Jumping over to the American Midwest, Kansas, losing some of their crop, maybe 18% max this year, downtrend. What's happening is the, the growing season itself is a third shortest on record. Again, you could expect next year to that jump up to the second or take the lead in the shortest growing period. As an example, the low temperatures are about two to three weeks ahead of time this year, setting record temperatures all across the area there in the Midwest and Montana, Kansas, Nebraska areas. This is taking a slight toll on the futures prices for wheat currently. This next snapshot on the Chicago Board of Trade shows the wheat futures prices out from 1960. We can expect this is kind of below where it will be from now. Expect it to jump back up and exceed the 2008 prices, but this time it's different. The 2008 was pretty much institutional investors jumping in for investment potential on the commodities. This one will actually be due to decreased supply. Now taking a look at California, the almond harvest is not going to exceed the record that was predicted. But from my point of view, who in their right mind would predict a record harvest of an agricultural crop when it's in a severe drought and continuing to increase the severity of the drought? Plants don't grow without water, whoever made that first forecast. Taking a look up into Canada and the prairie areas, Snow arrived incredibly early this year. Take a look at the picture there with the snow on the wheat. Record snows early. Ontario experienced the same thing, two degree temperature drop affecting some corn production. Ontario and Quebec, here's a forecast for you. You will lose your corn production next year up to 70%. Being surrounded by the Great Lakes, which are also showing signs of increased ice year upon year. Last year was record ice since the early 1970s. This year the trend will continue and the Great Lakes will have even more ice cover, which in the spring will create cooler conditions, creating more rainfall, which means you're not going to be able to till those fields and plant your seeds. Minus 70%, I say you're going to get max 30% out of your corn production area in these, these light green areas here that you see. A historical look 40 years ago in a cooling event decreased one degree temperature, which reduced the frost free period 15 days, which goes back into the amount of growing days that the crops can have in the ground, which will affect yield. 
Now the modern minimum temperature reconstruction here shows the same thing. The same pattern seems to be repeating. Where we're getting these cold events, the snow events early. Look at the dark blue in the United States. We can also expect that in Northern Europe as well as over in China and Eurasia. Jumping over to China, they're experiencing drought. They have been for several years. Temperatures are decreasing there as well. Desertification seems to be a major issue. This is the corn growing areas in China. When we get into northern China and Heilongjiang, you can see that um, you know when it cools down up there, that will be the first area affected. Now, some of these growing areas overlap. Wheat overlaps with corn and the soybeans overlap with the wheat. So you can predict all three will be affected in, in China. When I speak about Eurasia cooling, this is just the average over the last 20 years. You can see in the northern China area there where I just showed you the maps, three degrees below normal over the last 20 years. Desertification keeps expanding and growing in China. And how are you expected to grow any types of anything, wheat, vegetables, corn, whatever type of crop in this type of sandy, windblown condition cooler year on year? I'm not into the doom and gloom. I always believe there's solutions for every single problem that we have on this planet. Here's my next solution. We are going to need to grow hardier species of trees and vegetables that can withstand cooler temperatures. I've included a small list of different types of plants, vegetables, trees that can withstand frosts. You can slow down or pause the video to take a look. Thanks for watching. Hope you have a better idea of where we're heading and we're all going to have to face this together. We'll need community solutions.